Over a thousand years ago, the Caddo Indians lived in the forests of East Texas. Right there, that one. Today, Phil Cross is the last known Caddo elder who can build the traditional grass house of his ancestors. This one here's got a severe bend right up there I don't like. In the next half hour, he and his Caddo apprentice will oversee the construction of one of these homes, passing this ancient knowledge on for at least one more generation. Kuhut Kiwat, the Caddo Grass House, is funded in part by a grant from the Texas Historical Commission. More than a thousand years ago, a group of Caddo Indians known as the Hasine had settled 30 miles southwest of present-day Nacogdoches, Texas. They formed a thriving village, built ceremonial and burial mounds, produced pottery, planted crops, and constructed houses. Kuhut Kiwat, the Caddo Grass House. By the mid-1800s, the rapidly declining Caddo population had been forced out of their homelands and relocated to the area around Binger, Oklahoma. Right there, that one. Recently, through the combined efforts of the Texas Historical Commission and a group of determined volunteers... Wow. Let's mark that one. A Caddo elder and his apprentice returned to the forests of East Texas. You got plenty of a marker? Here, they joined with the local community in building a traditional grass house on the land of their ancestors. You know, in the old days, they may not have debarked them. Because when they put them in there and started a fire, you know, the yeah. bugs would probably disappear. At least eight years before I got here, people were talking about building this Caddo house, and it never managed to come to fruition. Opportunity came for us to come together and make this project happen. It wasn't such a hard sell. We were all real excited about it. I had to locate a Caddo to help us do this, and I realized quickly after taking the job here that Phil Cross was the, the person they had been contacting earlier. Once you have the Caddo invested, once Phil and Chad were on board, and a group of volunteers that are excited, support from funding agencies follows. So once those things fell into place, it just took a little bit of effort for writing grants and spreading the word. I'm a star debarker. I'm watching, you know, everybody, somebody, somebody's going to get the award. We need about 30 feet out. So I'm going to do how many steps? Five steps? Five steps to get you in here. OK. We're skinning the grass now because we're going to remove the turf before we start digging the holes and bending the poles. Mow your lawn is the first cattle rule. <laughs> Mow your lawn. Yeah. As far as I am aware, uh, Phil Cross, the Caddo elder that is helping us build this house, supervising the construction, is the last Caddo that knows how to build one of these structures. My name is Phil Cross. I'm an enrolled member of the Caddo Nation of Oklahoma that's located north of Anadarko, Oklahoma, and east of Binger. I grew up on our allotment that was granted in 1901 to our family when our reservation was broken up. Phil Cross is the only cattle elder that knows how to build this style of grass house. So, you know, he needed an extra hand and wanted to pass the tradition along to another tribal member. And, uh, you know, I was able to go down to Texas and, and uh, help with the house. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to measure every 30 inches and mark it with a flag. Good, that's good. Up. 
this site is protected under state and federal law as a state archaeological landmark in Texas. So not anyone can just come out here and dig holes in the ground and, and find stuff. And what we're doing to build the houses, first thing we have to do is dig holes for the poles. This one right here is especially, and that one next to it, we'll have to put some extra muscle to get them to bend, but they will. I guess whenever I get older, I'd like to pass it on so that people can still connect with this in the future and know that this was a Caddo house and this is how we would do it and this is what it would look like. That's way too many to lift a pole, but anyway. <laughs> Plus, Okay, go ahead with it. Keep it balanced. Keep it keep it down. You can put it down. Try to keep it from hitting the edge. There, okay. Ready? Yay! Yeah! Wow! Yeah, that's okay. Up, 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 up. Tilt up. Hopefully it's long enough. May not be. Maybe too thick. We may have to redo it, but cut it off and redo it. But we'll see how it goes. There you go. Yeah. Victor's the pole bending champ. People get it from that. Woo. Is this on the job training? That's good. Not not too far up. Sometimes Phil would say, you know, this pole needs to be moved in or out a little bit, and so that took untying it from the frame, scooting it out or pulling it in or trying to get it right. Chad, can you slide the knot that way up on the big pole? Yeah, like that standing up there on the scaffolding, wrestling this thing into position, holding on to it, and Phil trying to say, move the pole in about two inches. Okay, what's two inches to you? Because I can't see two inches while I'm holding this pole, <laughs> standing up here on this 20 foot tall scaffolding. <laughs> this one here's got a severe bend right up there I don't like. Okay, push it back. Right there, right there. Okay, turn it, turn it loose there. Tie it up good. You, you got it tied? That looks okay. It's, it's a little out of balance, but I think we can go with it. Spiral it real, pull it up real tight as you go along, yeah, if you can. Now pull that tight and go around once and then wrap it under here. Very good, wrap it on itself there, right here now. I like that. I think we got the hoop here. Can you get this edge, uh, Chad, over to this pole? Or is it too far over? Or get it up as high as you can. Move it out a little bit. A little, little more. That, that's about, that's good, about right there. You're going to be here tomorrow. We're losing our tying team tomorrow. Oh, you're not going to be here? He's not going to be here, and, and Chad's going home. Oh, okay. Well, that's a long pole, and it's really thick. Let's cut it off another 30 inches. Yeah, don't, don't let it flop. This is a exercise in pounding. <laughs> you need your pounding certificate. So are you gonna live in this when it's finished? Yeah, I'm gonna be in it for year round. So I want people to bring out, bring food. I kind of like barbecue. Pizza's good too, you know, just, just keep me supplied. <laughs> Boy, that's a long pole. We probably could have shortened that by. I hope that one holds together. That would look like it was dried a bit. When you look at the site and you imagine that there were several hundred Caddo living here together, 
They all need a place to sleep. So if one can imagine looking out and seeing 30 houses out here, for example, what would that look like? They would have had gardens around them. Uh, they would have been organized in space based on social rank. Uh, certain people would have been living in certain areas, uh, similar to the way we do things today. They would have traded. They would have moved things back and forth between the houses. They would have used the space. It, it was a common area within the plaza to do things. And so houses would have been an integral part of that. They would have helped define space in a lot of ways. Right now we're cutting additional willow saplings for the lath material for the house. Uh, this is basically just in case we need some additional uh, runs to finish. We're at the same location where we got the first batch of willow from, but now it's not March. It's summertime and we're having to hack our way into the location. You got two. I'm working on my master's in teaching and my teaching certification right now. So just kind of a student and looking for a teaching position to teach middle school math. I really love architecture and kind of more rustic, primitive type designs that I think are more green and sustainable, and this kind of combines all of those concepts. Well, I'm a senior at uh, Sam Houston State University. I'm a major in history with a minor in American studies. I can tell you all about government policy but I know very little about Caddo culture, the way that they dance, the songs that they sing, because when we look back now, our traditional culture is all European influenced. We lost a lot of who we were prior to European contact. And that's why it's been so special for me to interact with Phil, is because this is, these are the things that he knows and the things that he's willing to tell anybody who'll listen. Boy, that's way up there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Chad, we'll, we'll let you finish out on that big ladder over there as we get, uh, as you go around, so. A lot of people growing up, they go, oh, well, you, you know, you lived in a teepee or, or this and that, and it's just a common misconception. So it's kind of nice to be like, well, this, is, this was our kind of houses that we had being out here in the piney woods. We weren't a plains tribe. So these were the resources that were available to us. So this is how we made it. The grass will come down and overlap here. This was the portion where the pine poles are already tied and we're adding the willow crossbars. And so you start at the bottom and then you use that as this ladder to step up and up and up and up. And it would have been scary except that it was so much fun. I really enjoyed the idea of connecting with people in the past who have done this for millennia and that people have been climbing up here and this is the way it's done. That one, boy, it just has a mind of its own. You know, if they all move together, that's fine. Let me look, uh, it's a lot better. Tie those now, right now. Let's get those tied up. Well, me and my mom, we started out on the friends group, and we would always come to the meetings and things. And then they started to rebuild the grass house, and then we started to volunteer and help with that. And then we just got more involved with them. Growing up, I've been by this place dozens of times. I mean, we stop by here a lot. And every time we come here, I never really listen. You gotta be ready but I've started to listen. There's a lot of history and knowledge here that you can gain. These things are robust. <laughs> One of the first problems we had is that we didn't know if we could harvest enough switchgrass to uh, complete the house. It takes a lot of grass, and the type of switchgrass we use 
is uh, not readily available now as it, as it once was. I, it's amazing how much grass goes into this. Uh, you don't really know by just looking at the structure, like, oh, that's just, you know, a lot of bundles of grass. Phil acted as not only the architect and the builder of the structure, but he was what the Caddo called the Tama. They would walk around during house building with a switch and good naturedly drive people forward in, in working and have quality work. And nobody got their feelings hurt, nobody got upset. I need to put a strengthener on there. But it was to keep the work going and he knew the old ways in which this would be, so he could direct us. That may work. Lop that about right there, then take it to that one I was just looking at. Get you a, a couple of links. Okay, pound it on the ground to get it level, okay? That's the first thing. Go inside here, take it to him. As far as you can get it in there, keep going. He'll grab it. Supposed to be three and a half inches thick. So Chad, you're just gonna you're just gonna be guessing all the time, okay? Smoothing it out a bit, just like that. Push them up tight against the, the, the former tie. Yeah, now spread them out a bit. Push out about eight inches in the first push, okay? Okay. When we get up further, there'll be a handler who will receive grass. Well, I'm already ready for about a two hour break. You guys keep on here, I'll be back after lunch. I reached a point uh, where Phil was telling me what to do, and so I would just do it and try to, to empty my head of all thoughts of, of conventional house building or any of the things I knew how to do because this was so unlike that. Got it. That it's just over the, the willow below. It was unbelievably hot, and the only thing that made it bearable in that heat was the camaraderie of the community that we developed. Keep whomping. That's what a whomper does. The Caddo were horticulturalists. They managed the landscape. If they wanted to plant something, they cleared the area and they planted it. So knowing that they're establishing villages, they would have prepared large areas for grass. They would have cultivated grass and created plots for that. Uh, that might have been something that they used in their annual process to say, we can build a house now, we have the grass ready. Uh, they, they did manage the landscape significantly. They cleared areas, they planted things. Uh, they had, their, of course, their staple crops, corn, beans, and squash but there's nothing to say that they also didn't plant medicinal herbs just for flavor. Medicines, they planted that. Grass would have been just another thing that they would have managed. The Caddo lived here, they managed this land, they had a rich, wonderful civilization, and eventually, because of exploration and colonialism, they're no longer here. This is no longer their home. What makes my position worthwhile is to figure out how to build relationships with individuals, how to bring meaning back to this space. So for the Caddo today, that they can reclaim some of the sacredness that is their right, it's their homeland.
Phil passing down the knowledge and showing a group of people how to, to do it, and we're all incredibly fascinated with it. Being there every step of the way and seeing how trees were selected, how they were cut, how poles were planted, how the uh, grass was cut, uh, how the willow was cut, and how they're all assembled, and being there every step of the project has just been phenomenal for me in, in my education of Caddo traditions. Keep going. The Caddo, they developed their way of building. Needle coming through. It was working together, and I think that that's really happened here as well. Caddo's built these into modern times, but probably not long after 1920s or 30s. Caddo's virtually stopped building this grass thatched house. This house is done using, as best as we can guess, traditional materials, but we're using modern methods to do it. I'm coming under this one in here. Good? Yeah, that, that'll work. Okay. It's leaning a bit to the north, that's why I'm doing it. Perfect. I didn't intend to work up a sweat till about noon. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, that's good. That that helps out. Yeah, you can't. The grass and you have to start tying the green stuff. It's all cut it. Green grass at home. Okay. This is the next to the last one. Then we'll, we'll do the top, which is this grass over here. So if this moves along, you know, we'll, we'll be there, right there today. We might have something to do tomorrow, but I, I doubt it. It looks like we've got about eight feet of thatching on the, on the very crown to finish this. Is that the last one going in? Last bundle. This has been a special privilege, really an honor to do this. These houses have been done very few over the last century, 1900s. So doing one here on this site where our ancestors were and where there were many houses like this on this site has been uh, particularly gratifying. Good going, Kendall. You, thank you. Thank you. Madeline, you and John Good have job. been stalwart. Good job, Thank you. Tim, are you the guy, you and thank Vic, you. the man. John, good work here. Man, you were just one of the our core team. We're making a real connection between this place and real living people. We need everyone to understand that the Caddo are still a vibrant culture. They have their songs, they have their dances, they have their stories. And here we have a place in which we can make those connections and we can have an educational opportunity that will last a lifetime. It's a really special place to me. It's our homelands. It's a burial site. 
you know, our ancestors are just steps away from us. Kuhut Kiwat, the Caddo Grasshouse, is funded in part by a grant from the Texas Historical Commission. <laughs>